Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're talking about the Word 2019 exam, and we're looking at the fifth domain for this exam called Insert and Format Graphic Elements. Overall, this accommodates for 15 to 20% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at this domain with me. This video got a little bit long, so we're gonna break this up into two videos. In this first video, we're gonna look at the subdomains Insert Illustrations and Text Boxes and format illustrations and text boxes. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. In today's video, we're looking at the Word 2019 exam and we're looking at the fifth domain called Insert and Format Graphic Elements. Overall, this accommodates for 15 to 20% of the overall exam. We're looking at the first subdomain called Insert Illustrations and Text Boxes. This subdomain completely deals with inserting things. To begin, we have our cursor here in this document. We're going to click the Insert tab. And the first thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert shapes. We're in the Illustrations group. We're going to click the drop down for shapes. Now, I want to caution you here because there's a lot of shapes in this drop down list. You should look at the group headings here. So we know that the lines are going to have a bunch of lines in it. Block arrows are going to have block arrows. On the exam, if you're asked to insert a shape, using some of the descriptive words that are used for the shape and these group headings might help you find whatever you need faster. And of course, as you're digging through this list, you want to hover on whatever it is. That way you know exactly what you're inserting. We'll go ahead and select this lightning bolt and we'll just click here to insert that shape. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert pictures. We're going to go back to the insert tab. And again, we're in the illustrations group. We're going to click picture. My picture here is on my desktop in my working files folder. But I want to caution you on the exam, you want to feel comfortable navigating through the folders found under this PC. For this, my file was on the desktop, but your file might be in 3D objects, documents, pictures should feel comfortable navigating through those folders. But once you're there, you can select your image and click insert. And it went ahead and it put that picture on our page. Let's go ahead and shrink this. And we'll change the text wrap settings, although this is part of a different subdomain. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert 3D objects. You guessed it, we're back on the insert tab in the illustrations group. Now this is a new feature for Word 2019 and it hasn't been tested on before, but it is listed as something that you should be able to carry out. It's as simple as clicking the 3D dropdown and we can choose from a file or from an online source on the exam. It's probably gonna be from a file. It was just like inserting a picture, not much different. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert SmartArt graphics. On the Insert tab, or in the Illustrations group, and we're gonna click SmartArt. Now, there are a lot of smart art graphics that you can put in your document. Again, on the certification exam, you're going to want to look at whatever they're asking you to insert carefully because there might be a key word in there like list in the description of the smart art graphic. And that word list is going to help you narrow down your search to just these. Let's go ahead and insert this one vertical curve list and we'll click OK. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert screenshots or screen clippings. We're on the insert tab, we're on the illustrations group, and we're going to click the screenshot drop down. Now Word is giving me some available screens that I can take a screenshot of. If I just click this image, it will do that. Or if I want to take a screen clipping and actually draw out the dimensions, I can click this here. And notice I can just click and drag this section, and it brought my picture in for me. The last thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert text boxes. We're on the insert tab and we're in the text group for this. We're going to click the text box drop down. Now there are a lot of pre-built styles. You also can draw your own text box and if you click that it will create a drawing tool and you can draw out the dimensions of your text box. For this let's just go ahead and select the Austin quote and I want to touch this. I don't know if it'll get brought up in any other part of this video. But I'm going to go ahead and select this heading. On the exam, you might be asked to copy or cut text. I'm going to hit Control C on my keyboard. When you're in this section, you can just hit Control V, but notice it kind of kept that formatting. Something you might want to do on the exam, and you'll have to look carefully at the task question to see what you need to do. 
is right click on the area where you're going to paste the text and actually just click text only. And notice it kept the formatting from my text box. We're looking at the second subdomain called Format Illustrations and Text Boxes. We're told that we should be able to apply artistic effects. Let me go ahead and select this image that I screenshot from a different page. And with that image selected, I have the Picture Tools Format tab. In the Adjust group, I have some things like correction. So if I wanted to sharpen or soften an image, I could. I also have some brightness and contrast settings here in this group. If I click on color, maybe I want to add an orange accent to light to this picture. You could do that by just clicking there. And then I also have artistic effects. And there's different things that I could do to this image. And if I wanted to apply this watercolor sponge, I could. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to apply picture effects and picture styles. So with this image selected, I'm still on the Picture Tools Format tab, and I'm in the Picture Styles group. I'm going to click this More drop down. This list can be exhaustive to go through, I'll be honest with you. On the exam, if you're needing to apply something like this to a picture, I want to encourage you to just slow down for a second. Just take your time going through each one and hovering over them until you find what you need. Don't feel overwhelmed when you see this list. Just slow down just a little bit, and you should be okay. Let's go ahead and select this to apply it to the image. In addition to that, I could apply my own picture border. Maybe I want to change the color on that to a blue by clicking that. I have the option of adding more colors. I could do no outline. We can change the weight from a six to a smaller number. And then under dashes, we can change the style. Maybe we don't want that solid line, and we can change that to one of these other settings. In addition to that, we have some picture effects. And this is another list that can get exhaustive. There's really a lot in here. On the certification exam, if you get a task question like this, Read the task question carefully because if it said shadow in the description of what you're doing, it's going to help you narrow down the different picture effects that you need to look at. So maybe it's a shadow inner. Just check the wording. That'll help guide you to where you need to be. I want to encourage you to go through this list and just be familiar with the different picture effects as well as the different groupings within those picture effects. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to remove picture backgrounds. So this image, I have a feeling, is going to be a little bit difficult to play with. But with it selected, we have the Picture Tools Format tab. And we're in the Adjust group again. We're going to click Remove Background. And we can see that it's selecting some of the image and not other parts. If we were happy with the selection, we could click Keep All Changes. But what we're going to do is click on Mark Areas to Keep. And there are a few ways to add to this picture. Sometimes clicking and drawing around on the image is helpful. But you can also just click to add spots as well. Once you've made your selection, you're satisfied, you can click Keep Changes. This subdomain tells us that we should be able to format graphic elements. So I have this lightning bolt image over here. Let's go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger and we'll drag it down. But with this selected, we get the Drawing Tools Format tab. And in our Shape Styles group, if I click this More drop down, I have a lot of built in theme styles and presets that I can choose from. So if I wanted this yellow, notice I applied that to this shape. I also have the ability to add some shape fills. I have my theme colors and standard colors. I can add a picture, which will fill the shape with a picture. You can apply a gradient. And then you have some textures that you can apply. For the shape outline, you can again choose from the theme colors or standard colors. You can change your weight. You can make it a dash dot. But then you also have the shape effects. And again, this is similar to the pictures, but I want to encourage you to be familiar with these lists and the different groupings that you can find under the different shape effects. This subdomain tells us that we should be able to format SmartArt graphics. Over here on the right hand side, I have a SmartArt graphic. And with it selected, you should note that I actually have two ribbon tabs for this. We're in the layouts group. Notice that I can change the style of my SmartArt. So maybe I didn't like my first selection. I could choose this. And now I have the ability to add a picture in addition to my text. We can change the colors. And you should know that you can scroll through this list. For some reason, my students don't realize that as they're looking for specific colors. This list, you can scroll up and down. You have the different accent colors. But you also have things like colorful and the primary theme colors. And if you hover over any of the color types, it'll tell you what you're about to select. In the SmartArt Styles group, we also have this drop down. 
and we can choose some different effects. This is another list that can sometimes be cumbersome to look through for a specific type of effect. Just want to encourage you to slow down on something like this if you're struggling. Take a deep breath and just hover over each one until you find exactly what you need for the exam. And the last thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to format 3D objects. If I select this image and I go to the 3D Tools Format tab, the 3D Objects ribbon is actually pretty simple. The main thing that's different from the other ribbons is the 3D Model View. If I wanted to look at the bottom, if I click this, notice that my perspective for this camera changes. And if you don't find exactly what you need, I do want to encourage you on any of the ribbons, any of the groups, if you click the dialog launcher box, you'll get additional settings through a pane like this or a window that pops up in the center of your screen. You might just have to dig a little bit for what they're asking you to do.